Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very tired episode of uh, My Crypto Guru. How to set up your treasure device. Sorry, uh, I did not sleep very well last night, but anyway, it's not really relevant. I got my new treasure device in. I decided to get a Model T. I've got a couple Model 1s already, and I wanted to show you how to set this up. So, I like treasure. Uh, treasure and Ledger are some of the, the most known and most trusted crypto wallets on the market. Treasure, in my opinion, is better in just a general sense. I like their interface. I like the way they do things. And quite frankly, I've been with them for a very long time. So it's, uh, it's easy for me to use them. Now, you'll see in the instructions here, okay, oh, sorry, not really used to doing it like this. Connect your treasure to your computer, open treasure.io forward slash start, and it will help you with the setup process. The setup process is fairly straightforward and fairly easy. I want to bring up a couple really good points for this. Um, you have, first of all, inside here, I can figure out how to get the damn thing open. Your device, your little cable, right? Okay. Oh, some nice little stickers. And here's a little cable you can use. Okay. So it's USB C. Uh, I happen to use the cables they gave me and cables that I know myself. I do not suggest you use cables from somebody else, even though if there was a compromised cable, it would still be very difficult for them to steal your data. Um, so we've got this treasure device here. Let's go ahead and head over to, uh, let's see here. Let's head over to treasure.io forward slash start, just like it says here in the instructions. And we will, ooh, that's kind of neat. Um, we will start working on this together, okay? Okay, so I have put us over here at treasure.io forward slash start. And, and I get questions about this a lot. So I'm going to pause every once in a while and kind of clarify things where I see, I get questions from people in a general sense. Uh, so yes, it is treasure.io. Do not put a .com on the end. Do not put treasure.com. It is treasure.io. There are, there are more domains out there than just .com. Uh, in fact, I'm mycrypto.guru, and that's all it is. No more .com, no anything else on top of that. Forward slash start. So here we are saying, do we want Model 1 or Model T? Well, we've got a Model T here, obviously. So we're going to click on Model T and start setting this up. Got a little security tape. What it's saying here is that you want to make sure that uh, this tape is secure. It's kind of like uh, tampered food. You want to make sure they seal this at the factory and no one has intercepted your package in the, in the meantime and plugged into it and compromised the device. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, confirm that, that is correct. Let's see. It is as it should be. And then now we're going to go into the actual treasure wallet. Now, what it might want you to do here, I, of course, I already have treasure devices, so it didn't ask me to do it, but it's going to ask you probably, is to install what's called the treasure bridge. Okay? Now, I'm taking my tape off. Sorry, off camera here. Uh, the treasure bridge, if they ask you to install that, you need to install that. Okay, that is the interface program that connects your treasure to this Chrome and you'll have a bridge. If you want to plug, what I like about Treasure is that I can plug this into my Android phone. I don't think it works with Apple at the moment. Uh, let's see. Actually, that's a good question because years ago it did not. Treasure work with iPhone. They may have fixed that. Nope, not yet supported. And that was at uh, 2018. Let's see. So, Treasure does work with mobile wallets on the Android platform, but not on the iPhone. Sorry for you, Apple people. You can get yourself a cheap Android phone. In fact, I would suggest that anyway. Why not get a cheap Android phone to use for your Google Authenticator and your, uh, your Treasure device and your wallets and whatever, just as a separate security measure to keep it away from the phone that you use every day and gets exposed to the world. It's always a good idea to separate your banking. Remember, if you lose your cryptos, no one can get them back for you. That is both the greatest strength and the greatest weakness of this market and the way this currency works is that if, here's the downside, if you screw up, if you lose your money, if you send it to the wrong person or an address that doesn't exist or you send Bitcoin to a Bitcoin cash address or whatever you do and screw up, you can't get your money back. It's just what it is. 
if you send it to the wrong person, and by God's grace, there's a person on the other end of some random address you pulled somewhere, okay, which is virtually impossible, uh, they have to send it back to you. This is cash. Now, keep in mind, if there is a system where they can get the money back from you, then there is a system where they can stop you from spending that money. So the nice thing about Bitcoin is that because no one can keep you, can get it back for you, no one has control of it, therefore no one can stop you, okay? So you got to take the good with the bad. Every firearm can kill you and it can protect you. It's just what it is. It's a tool. So understand. Anyway, that's that's why it's so important we go over this when we connect these things correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in here, okay? And don't worry, you guys are going to see the wallet seed this thing came with. It doesn't matter. I'm going to set it up with a seed that I use anyway. So we've got our little treasure device plugged in. Okay. Welcome. Go to treasure.io to start. There we go. Just connect it in. We're going to do the initial firmware install. You're doing it all through the treasure website. So everything's good there. And while this is installing, because again, I just opened this thing up. Uh, while this is installing, understand, uh, people will go, well, what happens if Treasure goes out of business because I'm using their website and their bridge to interface? Okay, well, if they go out of business, you can still interface with your Android apps. I'm sure someone else will come up with an interface for it, but let's just say they don't. Um, you can take the seed here and you can turn around and plug it into any other device out there that supports the 12, 18, or 24 word seed that we get off of this. And you can... Um, you can recreate your wallet. You're not going to lose your money. Treasure, the Treasure device and the Treasure website and the Treasure company are not storing your money for you. They are merely the safe bridge to get to your money. That's what's going on here. That's how we have to think about this. They're not storing it for you. Your money is sitting out in the blockchain on the network. Okay. This is simply the device that gets connected to that account and then tells you what you have. Okay. So... This thing's processing here. Oh, just came up. So we're not going to recover because I don't need you guys knowing my wallet seed. So we're going to go ahead and create a new wallet. That's what you're going to do when you first get it anyway. Okay. Now, I'm going to fast forward through this just a bit because you'll, you'll know what's going on here. Uh, <coughs> I have never used a Shamir backup. Uh, let's see. It's actually not a bad idea. I'm going to learn more about that and probably make a video on the Shamir backup here pretty uh, next week or two. But uh, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and create with a single backup. Accept our terms. Now, here's what I like about the Treasure One versus the I'm sorry, yeah, the Treasure Model T versus the Treasure One that I have is it's got a touch screen on it, so you can go boop if it'll take it. There we go. Yeah. So you just click OK. So it's generating my 12 words flashing that we need to back it up uh oh now here's something interesting enable labeling now most of you will not care about labeling i happen to have a device where i manage my my family's uh crypto account so i need to know that this is my account this is so and so's account this is whatever inside like our bitcoin or bitcoin cash or whatever um so you can do labeling like that and what you'll do is you'll tie this to a dropbox account if you need help with that contact me directly uh, better off to do it that way because most people are not going to need labeling. So we're going to go ahead and say no on this just for the basic setup. Okay. Now, here is our backup. Oh, interesting. Here we go. So we're going to go ahead and click create backup. This recovery seed is the 12 words that recreates this wallet all the coins that you're storing. So the 12 words work on all the coins the treasure supports. You can see here on the left, Cardano, Tezo, Stello, uh, Stellar, Ethereum Classic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up the line, okay? So this recovery seed is, is vitally important as those, those 12 words can recreate all the coins that you dump on that this, this treasure device supports, okay? So I understand. Don't take a photo of it. Don't store it on your computer. I cannot tell you how many times I had people in my class take a photo of their seed and then store it on their phone. If someone has access to your phone, they have access to your seed and therefore they have your money. It is that simple. 
Again, any system where someone can get the money back for you is a system someone can control for you. There is no control in this setup. You control it. Do not save it to your cloud storage. Do not upload it to the internet. Write on a piece of paper. If you got a lot of money, write on a piece of paper, stick it in a piece of concrete and bury it in the backyard. I don't care. Just be smart about it. Anything that's out in the world can be shared, okay? And can be uh, hacked, say. So we're gonna do this, okay? Never make a digital copy. Here's one more, I understand. Write down these words, okay? Don't worry, I'll fast forward through this. Okay, and we're back. So I got the 12 words written down. Hold to confirm that I wrote them down. I don't need to look at them again. Now it's gonna ask me, select one of 12, two of 12, three of 12, all the way down the line to confirm that I wrote this down correctly. So we'll go ahead and do that. Well, sorry, it's gonna jump around, eight of 12. Uh, so it would be a good idea to number um, five, seven, nine, 11. So that way you can look on here quickly. Like it wants 8 of 12 right now. So let's do that one. 10 of 12. It's going to be that one. Oh, just need to confirm 3. Okay, so here we go. That's different than Model 1 uh, that required you to do all of them. Okay. And there we go. Now, continue. Put a pin on your treasure device. Do not let it be your birthday. Do not let it be the last four of your social. Do not let it be your house number. Pick a pin and make it just a little difficult for this guy to steal all your money. I don't know why I have to say that too. So do we want to enable pin protection? Absolutely. We want to enable pin protection. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then enter a new pin. Let's just do... And write that down. Okay. So I would use anywhere from a six to eight digit pin. If you can do an eight digit pin, great. Do an eight digit pin. You're better off. Okay. So you put the pin in and then you have to confirm it. Oh, one thing I want to show you what I really like about this is that in, in the model one does this too, is that every time you get this square here. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to go over to my little broadcast. Make sure you guys can see that. Okay, good. So every time this pad comes up, it comes up in a different number format. Don't just get into muscle memory where you click, okay, one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, because they're going to be in different spots and don't use one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. Um, so they're going to be in different spots. So if someone were to be looking over your shoulder, if you click them on the screen, or if you click them here, okay, uh, they're not going to be able to figure out that you click the top left box and the top right box or whatever, because it rearranged them every time. I like that. So we've got that. Uh, let me put this in. Touch screen's pretty, pretty legit. Okay, so we've got the pin number on there now. And then you're done. If you want to name it, you can name it. Let's just call it Testy. Or you know what? Let's do it mycrypto.guru. There you go. A little bit of shameless self-promotion. Do you really want to label it MyCrypto.Guru? Of course we do. That's an awesome label. Thank you. I did choose a wonderful name. Okay. Now, this is telling you to bookmark your treasure, wallet.treasure.io. So that way, someone doesn't send you an email that looks like it's from Treasure, and you click on it, you go to the wrong site. And then next thing you know, someone's compromising your, your device. Um, which is still very difficult to do, but possible. So uh, I would highly suggest that you take it. You can just take it right here and just drag it right down. Now, I've already got mine okay, over here on the right, but you can take it and just drag it right down in Chrome, and you can put that treasure wallet there if you want. So I would highly suggest you do that as well. So that way when you plug this in, you just click that link, and you know you're going to where you need to go. And then if you want to get on their newsletter, you can type your email address in. I am already on their newsletter, so it doesn't really matter to me. Follow them on Facebook, Twitter, Medium, or Medium, whatever. Okay? And now we're done. We're good. So, just a quick intro. How do we use it? Well, right now, we're in the vertcoin. So, keep in mind, this treasure device is one device, but it holds 
wallets for all these different coins. Okay, so here's our Bitcoin wallet. No one sent me anything yet, I don't think. That's unfortunate. So you can actually buy and sell inside the Treasure Wallet. I don't know what their fees are. Um, that would be something good to look up. What are Treasure Buy Sell fees? Let's see. Well, maybe we're not going to find a quick answer to that. I would look up their fees before you get too involved in, in buying through here. I personally like to use an exchange. You know, Coinbase, again, it's half a percent, all the way down to 0.04% if you're doing $500 million in trades a year. Uh, and then Binance is 0.1% all the way down anyway. So I don't know anybody's going to be able to do it that well. There's some pretty neat stuff you can do. You can exchange coins directly through the treasure device. Okay, buy, sell again. Um, you can sign and verify messages. If you want to send a confirm, like they know it was you message to somebody, you can do that, and you can do it straight to their address. Cost you know fractions of a bitcoin. Um, here's a list of your transactions. Here is your receive address. Okay. Now let's go into the receive address. If I want to receive bitcoin, so your point of failure with a bitcoin transaction okay, or any crypto transaction, is the point at which you're given the information and then giving it to the next person to, to send to you. So meaning, if I get my receive address here, and then I send that, let's say through email, to a buddy of mine to send me money, I don't know that I haven't been compromised in the middle. Someone has seen the email and wrote in their own email or their own Bitcoin address to send the money to. I, it, it's crazy, but it can happen. Um, I know this sounds a little uh, over the top, but again, I cannot stress enough, there is no one to get your money back if you mess up. You are completely on your own. So take the precautions. What I do, I'll show the address. So it'll pop up here. Okay. And then I confirm the address is what's showing up on the treasure device. So this little communication through this cable, okay, maybe my, maybe my laptop's compromised, maybe it has a virus. The treasure device is a protected space. So the chance of it getting compromised is virtually non-existent. So... I'll check and say, okay, is this the address that I'm showing on the screen? The address that the treasure device transmitted to my laptop and my laptop is showing me that I'm going to copy and send to someone, is that the address I show here? So I go through it and yes, I look at the whole thing. And if it doesn't line up, then I know I have a problem. So I can click okay, it is legit. There's a QR code I can send somebody if I want and there's the address. So me personally, if I'm sending an e a Bitcoin address or a payment address to somebody through email or any kind of system that's, that can be compromised, which is any system, uh, I will send a couple things. I will send a picture of the QR code and I will send a copy of the actual, um, the actual address. And I will send in two separate messages. I will send the address maybe an email. I'll send a picture of the QR code with my phone and I will send that through text. And that way they have something to compare it to. They can scan the QR code, make sure the address comes up, make sure they're legitimate. The chance of being compromised on both uh, mediums at the same or mediums at the same time is very, very, very slim. So it's a good way to back things up. Or I'll send a copy of the address in text via email and another one via text to make sure they match and make sure that we're gonna get our, our coins to the right address. Again, if they send it to the wrong address, there ain't nobody gonna get it back for you. So if I want to send, same thing. I copy their address here. I confirm it over the phone with them. Hey, here's what I have, capital B, lower V, that kind of thing. How much do I want to send? And then here's what's interesting a lot of people don't realize is that what fee am I willing to pay? Okay, so how much am I willing to pay to make sure this goes through in a decent amount of time? Do I need it there right away? Do I need it there in 10 minutes? I want to absolutely get it in the next block. You're looking at about 100 and 107 Satoshis per byte. Do I care that it gets there sometime today or tomorrow? Okay, now we're down to 17 Satoshis per byte. Um, I have, when I first bought this, I sent the money through my Mycelium wallet and I sent it with a very low fee just to see how long it would take and it took four and a half days. So, sorry treasure guys, hopefully you got all the money you wanted because uh, that was locked in. Anyway, so again, you can buy and sell, you can do exchange uh, and you can do a sign and verify. Okay, I got a little rambly there for a second, so we're going to go ahead and pick up here. Um, again, if you want to do connect this into a Dropbox and enable labeling, keep in mind, enable labeling 
through a Dropbox account just means you install Dropbox on all the devices. Okay, you connect them all in the same Dropbox account, and it takes this little encrypted information for the Treasure device and it dumps it in there. So if I wanted to label this account right here into uh, you know Andrew's account and daughter's account and child's account, whatever. That labeling is not located on the Treasure device. It is kept in an encrypted file through your Dropbox. That's how you share it through your Dropbox account. Um, again, it's just for organizational. But uh, the enable labeling, you don't have to worry about... Um, oh, and I want to show you another thing on labeling. You can actually, when you do a send and receive, you can actually go in here and under the transactions, and you can go, okay, this transaction is from Coinbase, and this transaction is to my kid or whatever you can label not only the accounts but you can label the transactions and that way you can look through there let's say you get audited and you can go okay well no that went to coinbase that went to binance that went to a sandwich shop in london or whatever it is and it, it helps you piece together things in case you ever get audited or just want to know like hey where'd my money go um so that's what labeling does but there is nothing stored on the dropbox outside of just the labels for the transactions the transactions are not stored, the balances aren't stored, nothing about the treasure is stored. It just says, look, I've got this, this file over here that tells me these transactions are lined up. And if you do install labeling and you set it up, uh, every time you plug your treasure device in and you switch wallets, it will ask you, do you want to enable labeling? Because it has to get confirmation that you want to read that file every time. Okay. Uh, and you'll notice it'll take a second to like pop in and say, okay, account one is boom, Andrew's account all the way down the line. So Anyway, um, I'm not sure what Treasure Suite is. I'm going to look at that a little bit later. But here's the intro to how to set up your Treasure. And uh, if you guys need me, which I would assume that you would if we're sitting here, uh, go to facebook.com forward slash mycryptoguru. Don't search for mycryptoguru because there's been a few people coming up with fake sites. And uh, I've been trying to get them taken down, but it's taken a little while. So, their sites out there look exactly like mine, but you just want to go to forward slash mycryptoguru, okay? And uh, add yourself here, okay? Join this. We'll get in some, uh, we'll be doing free online lectures and tutorials, and I just enjoy teaching this. So, what I charge for is just the initial class on Udemy, and uh, if you want one-on-one -on -one instruction, and I'm pretty reasonable on that too. It just gives me something to do. So, anyway... Uh, if you have any other questions, like I said, message me on my crypto guru and we'll go from there. I guess that's about it. So I appreciate you watching and let me know if you need anything. Thanks.